Hi, Angela Wolf here, fashion designer and online instructor. Today I want to show you how to drape your own cowl neckline, if, regardless if it's a knit top, silk. You could also use the cowl in the back of the shirt, and here's a silk that's a little, little softer that you could use for a blouse. This is very simple to do, and it's much easier if you drape it. So the options of fabrics, well you have a lot, but here's an example. This is silk charmeuse, which I absolutely love. And look at the drape. So the key is you're going to drape this on the bias. So I'm going to use a different fabric for that, but let me just show you how this works. This is the straight of grain. So your bias is a 45 degree angle from that. If you're unsure where that is, you can always mark it. And you just take this up here. See how beautiful that drape is? So I'm going to use a different fabric here and I'm going to give you a few more details on that. How low do you want that drape to go? <laughs> so you could start, let's grab a little tape here. This is tape that you can use on a dress form. Here's my shoulder position. Let's just say you want your drape to go here. I can mark it on both sides. But ideally, once you're finished draping, you're just gonna use one side for your pattern just in case it's uneven a little bit. So this fabric is a little thicker, it's a satin, but it'll still offer a great drape. Here we go, I'm turning this at a 45 degree angle. If you're worried about cutting into your fabric, just use a muslin fabric, just like a lightweight cotton that's not very expensive. So I'm going to drape this down to where I want that cowl. Just pin into your dress form. See that right here? Beautiful. All right, we're gonna keep pinning now. This would make an absolute gorgeous dress. If you're wondering what size fabric you should start with, I started mine about 40, 36 by 36 is a fine measurement, 36 inches by 36, or you can go a little bit more. Just depends on your size and your dress form. Now remember, you're gonna to have to get this top over your head, but because we're cutting it on the bias, it shouldn't be a problem. Bias stretches. All right, so I'm just gonna start pinning. I'm gonna start cutting, I mean, here on the side. So this is going to be my side seam. You need an armhole, right? <laughs> I can feel on my dress form where that armhole is. So I'm just cutting around. There's my shoulder seam, there's my armhole. It looks like I need to go over just a little bit more. If you're a little bit nervous when you first start this, just cut in little increments and then keep adding more. So we're almost there. I will thread mark that or use chalk. What about, where do you want the hem to go? Well, let's start cutting around the front and see. Don't worry, if you don't have a dress form, I'll show you what the pattern looks like when we're finished, but I'm just gonna keep cutting here. Around the side. Going around the armhole on the dress form. Ideally, you want the dress form to be padded out for whatever your size is. So if you have, I don't know, maybe you could throw a bra on there or some padding if you need some in the tummy area or anything like that. All right, we're just about finished. Looks pretty good, doesn't it? So I'm gonna check these shoulders. I'll take this off of the dress form, but I've already cut one out to help you out. So there's your drape. For the back piece, you would do the same thing. You can drape it on the bias, or you can use a straight of grain. It's your choice. For those of you that don't have a dress form, or those of you that just finished, this was my piece. So all I did is I took my piece of fabric, this is what it would have looked like coming off of the dress form, folded it in half. This one already has the facing on it. And all you wanna do is trace that onto your pattern. So just pretend I just trace this. The pink sheet is the facing. This always seems to get everyone. What kind of facing do I have? Like even my neckline has a facing. If it's a knit, you can just serge the inside edges, but you really need it to be finished somewhat nicely on the inside. So here's the trick. 
just gonna cut down. I've left this little room here just so you can see a little bit better. The pink piece is your facing, remember? So on this side, I'm just gonna fold that in half and pretend I have two of those pieces. When I fold this out, go down here about five or six inches. I'm just visually doing this, but you can measure. And you just wanna curve up to that shoulder seam, just like that. So that's your facing piece, regardless of what fabric you're using. So there's your pattern piece, cut it out. I'm gonna cut this one on the bias. I didn't think you needed to watch that, so I've already cut this out. Here is my pattern piece. This is my shoulder seam, and there's my facing. It matches this right here. So how on earth do you sew this? Well, it's really fast and easy. Again, this is a tank top. This is the back piece of your shirt. So you're going to pin with right sides together your shoulder seam right here. Okay, that's your back piece, that's your front. And then you can do this all in one step. The first thing I would do is take this edge here, run it through the serger to finish the edge. But if it doesn't fray, don't worry about it. The other, one more thing before I do that. This is your back neckline. I cut these strips. This is bias, two inch wide. I usually finish the back with a piece of bias and then I sew it into the shoulder. And I'll show you just that real quick, but first let me finish pinning this up here so you can see this. And then the front folds over the back, just like that. Now I'm gonna go to the sewing machine and sew this, but if I pin this in place, I just want you to see what it looks like from a big area. So see that? There's your drape, and the inside of your neckline is finished. The other thing is, let me just lay this down. Once you have all that sewn, I will go ahead and true this area out. So I'll sew it first, but just to give you a visual. You want, this is the outside edge of your, of your um, shoulder. You want that to be even. All right, so let's go to the sewing machine. Let me show you a few tips for down here. When you're sewing a slinky fabric, sometimes it can get a little challenging, but just sew slowly and use a stitch length of 2.5. That's usually easier. So this is the back piece. Give you a visual right here, see? All right, I'm just gonna sew a little strip of this. This is the bias tape. Now when you attach the bias tape to the neckline, I'm stretching it just a little bit and allowing the undergarment to ease. You'll see me do this a couple of times, or you have already seen me do this a couple of times on this season if it's so easy. I'm just gonna do a little edge here just to show you. So there's from the right side, and I would press this under and fold it over. Just like that. Now I, don't, I didn't press this, but I'll at least give you just a quick preview of this. So you're gonna attach the, the, ba the bias tape all the way to the back neckline. But you can see what it looks like right here. I have this hanging over the edge here. You just cut that off to make it even. So this is the inside neckline. The next thing I'm gonna do is show you what I did up there first. Find the right side here. Here we go. Here's the front. The front goes to the back, right at the center. So I already have the back neckline finished. I don't have to worry about doing anything there. Fold this over the corner, just like that. Okay, go back to the sewing machine. This edge here is the shoulder edge on the back that we're gonna be cutting off. All right, go a little bit further. All right. 
So there's the front of our top with the cowl, and there's the back. Now let's go back and finish our armholes. This area here, because you draped it, it might not have matched up correctly or whatever, all you have to do, because it's a tank top, just trim. So this matches the front. So there's your armhole. The next thing that you'll do is just use bias tape to finish that armhole the same way that I showed you on that little brief area of the neckline. And you can sew your, your side seams down. And you're all finished. To hem, you have a lot of options, but let's see. The drape on this is gonna be beautiful. You finish the back. What about the hemlines? Well, on this one, I just used a serger. It's a very lightweight fabric, three thread overlock. On the knit over there, I used a double cover stitch machine. That works fine. It really depends on your fabric. You could do a real narrow rolled hem. That would look great too. This one here is even different. I just cut off pieces on the bias. You have a lot of options on this. The big thing is the cowl and the facing. So regardless of what fabric you're using, just remember to finish your facing, tuck it in, and you're ready to go. And that's how simple it is to drape a cowl neckline. Oh, my God.